Hello and welcome to A Drummer's Guide to the podcast all about the things that it takes to be a professional musician without actually going into playing the instrument because I'm kind of taking that as a given that you're working on that but there's so much more that goes into being a professional musician. So today, <laughs> I'm Emily Dolan Davis by the way in case you're new here, um, and today I would like to talk about Trolls and haters. Um, the reason for this is because it's off the back of, uh, at the time of recording this, I've just re released the first of the next sort of batch of episodes, as in I took a two year hiatus and um, almost two years and uh, came back. And the first episode was released a couple of days ago. Now, when I tell you the response has been just so wonderful and spectacular and just so kind and and just all the things that I love about the sort of base of people that seems to have um, come together through A Drummer's Guide too. It, it's been wonderful and the love, I just feel so much love from so many of you and, and, and like thank you first of all. You are wonderful humans and I appreciate you so much, you'll never know. Um, however, Along with that, did come some trolls! Woohoo! So uh, I'll go into why my reaction is like happiness uh, in a moment, but um, I feel like everyone has to deal with trolls or haters in some kind of capacity throughout life. Because I was kind of reflecting on the fact that you'll always have people that will give you some sort of pushback or friction if you're trying to do something that is quote unquote different in kind of life, in everyday life, and different, in quotes, <laughs> is becoming um, a lot, the scope of being different has become a lot smaller, which is great. Uh, and what I mean by that is that things that may have seemed different and odd and strange when I was growing up do not seem strange anymore, which is awesome and it makes me happy. Um, and like I say, I'm going to go back to when I was in school um, and when I was in school, being a female and playing the drums was strange. It was very odd. Um, it was very much seen as a male instrument. Um, and, you know, if you played the drums, then what are you trying to do? You're trying to be a bloke. Um, and what's interesting to me sort of obviously i've been playing for 25 years now and as i get older it's really interesting seeing the lack of response to me being on the drums in any given situation and this is most prominent in the voice kids it's one of my favorite things about the voice kids is that when the kids come in to sing uh, in rehearsals they don't even notice that there's a girl on the drums and that makes me so happy aside from the, from the fact that literally the reason i took up the drums i like being at the back i don't want to be noticed i don't want to be like the the the, the front person no 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 that's fine um but in the past, you know, people would take notice. Oh, there's a girl on the drums or say something or whatever. These kids, no, not even batting an eyelid. And that makes me so happy. I can't even tell you. So anyway, let's get into it. So haters and trolls. Like I say, it's kind of a broad scope that I'm going to go for in terms of what I mean by haters and trolls. And I'll go back to sort of school time. So um, when I was a kid, like I say, being a drummer, being a female, those two things, very unusual. Um, I went to a school where it was just a regular school, um, which I'm so grateful that I just went to a regular school because it was full of so many different types of people, which was awesome. It was just, it was great because um, it meant that you're really good at sort of like connecting with anyone. Like, I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you like, what you dislike. I, I feel like I'm pretty good at connecting with most people hopefully, I'd like to think. Um, however, like I say, being a female, being a drummer, very unusual. The drummers that were in my school were, the majority were male, like 99.999%. Um, I say that as if there were like thousands of drummers, there weren't. Um, but the ones that bucked the trend were me and my best friend Sharice. So if anyone doesn't know Sharice Osei, wonderful human being, great drummer, plays with Simple Minds at the moment, played with Mika for years. Um, yeah, so we went to school together, we started playing drums on the same day, thank goodness, because I feel like we were such a support for each other and I very much credit where I am today massively to her because, you know, I 
I wouldn't have survived without her. I don't think we would have survived without each other. Um, so we were lucky that we had each other in that way. We were literally joined at the hip. Some would say we still are. When you see us out and about, you'll understand what I mean. Like that bond never goes away <laughs> it's so good um so anyway we would often go in school uh, early an hour early and we would um play drums we would practice we'd do the same at lunchtime we'd do the same after school which was which is great on paper but then when you're uh, also sort of 13 years old 14 years old and you know you're part of a group of girls you know your girlfriends there were about six of us in this group me and Sharice and these four other girls um and when they would be like oh yeah like this lunchtime let's go do that and Sharice and I would be like no no we're we're gonna go drum we're gonna go do drums we're gonna go practice or we've got a band rehearsal with xyz or you know there's an a-level performance we have to practice for that um as in the a-level students we would be playing with them when we were like 12 13 14 um and that was often met with why are you doing that why why would you do that what do you think you are do you think that you're like a guy or something are you trying to be a guy is that what it is are you gay is that what it is so that's what that was met with so a lot of pushback of like you're you're not conforming to what is socially acceptable in this time and that's difficult to deal with at that age it doesn't matter what it is you know i think there's not only are your hormones flying around like something chronic but you know to not feel socially accepted in a group of people that you would consider your friendship group. I look back and my goodness, so dysfunctional, but I know that a lot of people have that like in terms of um, social groups when you're younger and you can retrospectively go, that was unhealthy, that was very unhealthy. And um, yeah, like I said, I was just lucky that me and Sharice were on the same page and we both understood each other and, and what our goals were so we could kind of lean on each other if we were struggling, um, which was so useful. But it was kind of the first iteration of dealing with haters because that's kind it's kind of what it was it was just like why aren't you doing what i want you to do like there's one specific girl i'm thinking of when i'm, I'm thinking about this um and my reaction to it at the time was kind of i was very shy i was very not self-confident um i was yeah i was incredibly insecure as we all are at that age so I would kind of pacify the situation, but in my head, I would be like, okay, you're, you're trying to make me feel bad about this. You're trying to make me do what you want. Well, I'm going to show you like in the future. And at the time, I remember distinctly kind of my, <laughs> my gauge of success at age 13 was to play on top of the pops which is a tv show that used to be on in the uk it would be on every friday night and you'd have like i don't know five or six different artists that would uh, play i mean it's a mime gig like obviously i know this now retrospectively but um yeah to me i had this image in my head of her particularly watching top of the pops and either going oh oh okay i get it now or going oh yeah i knew her like i knew her i was friends with her <laughs> so that's what i had in my head so that was my initial sort of coping strategy of how to deal with haters when i was younger and like i say having sharice there was a massive thing because we could kind of just center each other and just be like it's cool let's go let's let's both go and play some more drums <laughs> the best thing on the planet so anyway so there's that um more recently so as i said i just released this episode um at the time of recording this i've just released the not quitting um <laughs> episode the welcome back episode of a drummer's guide 2 and it was met with so much love and wonderfulness but then of course there was one, one comment and that i noticed and i'll go into why i noticed that and why that happens because I know I'm not the only one um, who is basically going, oh, this is a humble brag. Like, oh, you're just saying that you're overcommitted and blah, 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 blah. Just trying to, I'd, to be honest, I don't even know what the sketch was, but I was like, oh, oh, well, that's a shame. But not because of me, not reflecting on me, but reflecting on them like, oh, that's, that's a real shame that that happened um and then there's another specific thing that i i remember so um 
on TikTok, I posted this video about uh, things that people used to say to me when I was a kid growing up. Um, things like girls can't play drums, like, oh, you know, just all the sort of negative things of like, oh, I didn't know that girls could play drums. Oh, that's interesting. Um, do you do you need a hand? Like, um, if you want to take a break, you know, let me know and I'll take over. Or you know, just this kind of uh, preconceived idea, I suppose, that I wasn't able to do what I was there to do because I was a female, which is insane. But there we go. It's the time that I grew up in, in and. Um, that was my experience. So anyway, I put up this TikTok thing, quite a light-hearted sort of thing of like beginning with those things that were said to me and then followed by a series of pictures of me playing and videos of me drumming and just like, well, I did it anyway sort of sketch. That's kind of the thing, trying to help inspire other people. Anyway, I got this comment. It was so funny. It was a fella saying, um, so again, had so many wonderful comments, so many lovely comments, and just people really enjoying it and connecting with it. I was like, yes, this is awesome, this is why I do this. And then one, there was one comment from a fella who basically just said, uh, in regards to all those things that people had said to me and I'd shared, said no one ever. <laughs> said no one ever. Oh, I was like, oh gosh, oh goodness. Bless you. So anyway, um, first of all, I want to address the fact that, you know, it doesn't matter how many wonderful comments that you have. And again, growing up when that one girl or the group of girls would be like, what are you doing? Why are you going to play drums? Oh, it's rubbish, whatever. Alongside that, there were so many people going, it's so great that you're doing this. And, you know, all these positive things, but we tend to focus on the negative. And um, as people know that have been following me for any amount of time. I'm very interested in psychology and things like that. I read a lot of books on that subject. Um, and it's a really interesting thing because we are hardwired to focus on the negative things, which um, I think is so fascinating. Basically, it goes back from what I've read. And, you know, I, I very much take all of this stuff as um, this is how I know it to be true for me and, and what I've learned. But that's not to say that things might not be found out in the future and all that sort of stuff. Like, I'm very open to ideas. I'm fascinated by the different ways that people think. But evolutionarily speaking, apparently, and again, this is just from me reading books. I haven't done any of my own research or studies or anything like that. Although, who knows, one day, maybe. Um, we are programmed to look for the negative, i.e. the threats, because uh, back in the day when you were part of a tribe or whatever else, um, you would have to look for those dangers because it would mean life or death. Obviously, now it's not like that. It's very, very different, but there is thousands of years of conditioning on our brains, so we do tend to focus on the negative as a threat, and that's why the positive things are often negated and the negatives are uh, very much put into the forefront of our minds. So um, that's a shame. <laughs> but if you know that, sometimes it kind of takes the energy out of it. Because, well, at least for me, I feel like, okay, I know why I'm focusing on this and I'm taking notice. Um, I know why it might be evoking a bit of a, an emotional reaction. Um, and that's okay, kind of thing. Like, it's, it's, it's not even that I'm not doing it by choice. I'm not doing it by choice, but then I do have a choice off the back of that, if that makes sense. Um, and if anything, it's just like, this is just part of it. So it's all fine. Uh, it's all fine, even not fine. Um, so anyway, when I happen across these trolls or haters, and I'm talking about now um, versus when I was younger, obviously I didn't have a lot of uh, like experience and just, you know, I was still growing, I was still developing, arguably I still am. But now when I come across uh, haters or trolls or any sort of negative comments, the first thing that I will do is just center myself and just go, okay, just ask myself a question. I talk to myself a lot, so please bear with me if you kind of get confused and you think that I'm talking to someone. I am, but it's just me, I'm just talking to myself. So I say to myself, right, why am I actually doing this? So in terms of the episode that I just released, um, I'm doing it for you guys that are listening right now. <laughs> um, I'm doing it for the people who want some support, uh, that want connection, that want to know that they're not alone. Um, I have, like I say, 
um, attracted a lot of like-minded people uh, that have similar approaches or they want to have similar approaches. Um, the majority of the people that I have attracted into this sort of community are very kind, especially to each other. And if you want to see any evidence of that ever, come on to any of my lives, whether that's on TikTok, whether that's on Instagram, which I don't do that much anymore. Um, come on to my YouTube lives, which again, I'm not doing a lot at the moment, but um, yeah, and, and my Zoom uh, hangs, which are over on Patreon you will see the level of kindness and support and community you know on my lives on TikTok I play for half an hour and in that time it's wonderful to me just to see the people that come in the regulars who yeah okay they're there because maybe they want to see me play maybe they want to chat with me or whatever but actually when they're chatting to each other and catching up and this happened on the YouTube lives when I was doing live from emilydrums.com. So when I was recording sessions, I would go live and would have people in and, and everyone would be chatting amongst themselves. Whilst I was recording, I was just working. And I would come back to have like a break to chat to everyone. And I would just see everyone going, oh, hey, how are you? What have you been up to? Oh, how was that? And oh, and how's your cat now? Oh, what's everyone eating today? It was just this beautiful community that was created and um like i say these people that are just so wonderful that i'm still in touch with and i just i hold so dearly in my heart and if you're listening to this you know exactly who you are and every time i see your name pop up on a comment or just if you do happen across a live it makes me so happy because you are my core people you know what I mean and that core is growing every time I go live it grows anyway I'm sort of going on a tangent here but the point is is that I notice those people and I remember those people and I remember that that's why I'm doing this so that kind of centers me I'm like cool I know that I'm putting out whatever I'm putting out into the world for the right reasons um and that kind of gives me some sort of peace some sort of solace and I'm just like cool I can live with myself with that even if one person is going you're an idiot I'm going well I'm just doing what I'm doing and that's fine so the second thing that I um do when I receive things like this is that I notice that actually the person that is spouting whatever they're spouting is probably having a really rough day and I hope it's only a rough day but the reality is it can be a rough week a rough month even a rough year and their way of coping with that is to lash out at others and I try to lead with some sort of compassion towards that and just go oh gosh what a nightmare for them like isn't it terrible that they have to do that to feel better? Like that's such a shame. And it makes me feel sad, genuine, gen, genuinely. Um, and again, I had this with this person who was saying, oh, this is a humble brag, blah, 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 blah. Now this video that I put out, it was to kind of say, oh, the new episode is out. You could read it as a humble brag. You could, and that's fine if they wanted to see it like that. But it, <sighs> There was so much more to that video and the fact that they focused on that i just found so heartbreaking because i can imagine that that kind of attitude is taken into other areas of their life and i do believe that what you focus on is kind of what well, it is what you focus on is what you believe which is so sad to me because i anyone that knows I, i've struggled a lot with depression in my life um and anxiety and stuff like that but I'm in a place now where I'm able to consciously focus on the great things in my life. And I, oh my God, I have so many things to be thankful for. I always have. And knowing that and actively doing that is something that's invaluable. But what comes with that is you often notice how people with maybe 
a more negative attitude, you will notice what they focus on in, in a situation where you can see all the positives that they have in their life and they just can't see it. And I understand that because like I say, when I was suffering really badly with depression, I was in exactly that same headspace and it's a nightmare and it's so difficult to get out of, nigh on impossible at times um, and all you can see are the negatives. So again, when I read any sort of like negative comment like that, I just, I feel so much empathy of like, oh, I may not have been where they've been, but I have some understanding of what it feels like to only be able to read everything as a negative situation and put a negative spin on everything. These days, as I say, I actively try and put a positive spin on everything. Um, and I'll probably do an episode on that, actually. Uh, funnily enough, my cousin commented and was like, I want to know how you stay so positive about everything. Oh, my cousin. Oh. I'm getting to see my Canadian cousins in a couple of weeks and I'm so excited. They are like some of my favorite people on planet Earth. They're so brilliant. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where I start with in terms of my headspace when I get these comments. And don't get me wrong, when I first read negative comments, sometimes they do hurt and I'm like, oh, oh, that sucks. But then I try and get into this mode of like, okay, this probably isn't about me, like they're probably projecting onto me. So actually, that's a shame. That's a shame that they're feeling like that. So then I go from there and I'll do a number of things. So um, either I will, depending on the level of like what's going on, I'll either ignore the comment and just move on with my life, which is fine. I've done that a few times and it's kind of fine. It does sort of sometimes niggle at me. Um, and even now there's certain comments that I have just left that weirdly, I don't even remember what they said. Oh, in fact, no, one of them I definitely do. But I definitely remember how they made me feel. I don't even remember who left them. I don't remember names or anything like that. And it's kind of like, I'd rather respond in a kind way um, to, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's kind of like, I know you're being mean to me, but I just want you to know that I'm here sort of thing. So I do a number of things. So I either offer some sort of kind, what I deem as kind response somehow. I sort of try and circumvent it. Um, and yeah, just to try and like, I don't know, just to try and disarm them and diffuse the situation. Cause the other thing that sometimes happens is when people leave negative comments, other people will jump in. And that I don't like. I don't like people, I, I appreciate people, um, fighting my corner and standing up for me and all of that I really do and it means so much however I don't I don't agree with kind of like uh like bashing people down it's not cool I I want this to be inclusive even if you're being mean I, I just feel the hurt and I just want you to feel like look I understand it's it's fine if you want to still be part of this you can I'm not here to fight you and I don't want anyone else to fight you. Um, it's not, it's not my thing. I guess I'm a pacifist. Am I? I don't know. So anyway, um, yeah, my main thing is to kind of disarm or diffuse a situation. And I do this in a number of ways. So for instance, um, uh, with the TikTok guy, um, who was saying about uh, all of the experiences that I'd had growing up, all the things that were told to me about, you can't be a drummer because you're a girl, all that sort of stuff. I tried to disarm it and diffuse it. <laughs> I was a bit naughty. I was a bit, it was um, a bit roundabout, but basically I used the card of sort of um, using ignorance, I suppose, to kind of lighten the mood as it were. So I said to him, and I'd looked at his profile, he was definitely a bloke. He was kind of, I think, I don't know what age he was. I have no idea actually, but definitely a bloke. And um, I played ignorant and I, I assumed that he was a girl. So my response to him going said no one ever about the stuff that I heard as a kid, I said, um, I'm so glad to hear that you grew up not having to hear those comments. That really warms my heart. I'm so happy that you never had to hear that as a, as a girl growing up. That's wicked. And he responded just here, well, I'm a bloke. And I left it at that because I was like, cool, you've just answered your own, like, I feel like hopefully there's some sort of self actualization. I'm not sure that's the right term, but some realization of like, oh, oh, 
actually. But maybe there wasn't, and that's fine. It's fine, I just was like, let's be a bit more playful with this. It's not that deep. It doesn't matter if someone doesn't validate what my experience is, it doesn't matter. It's my experience, it's not yours, and that's fine. If you wanna believe it, not believe it, that's totally your prerogative, and it doesn't actually affect me in any way. So um, another way that I try and diffuse it is to pretend that whatever they've said is a joke. And the reason for that is to kind of, again, break the pattern of uh, being mean and wanting an aggressive or negative response, um, but also giving the opportunity for, because I often find that people that leave negative comments just want to rant. And if they actually have a response, it freaks them out a little bit. That's often my experience. But by doing it in that way and going, oh, you're so funny, um, it gives them the opportunity to latch onto that and go and sort of say, oh yeah, I'm glad you liked my joke. So it opens up a conversation, a dialogue. It opens up the opportunity to come into this fold. Like, come on, like, let me put my arm around you. Let's come be a part of this. Like, it's cool. Like, I, I care. Um, I'm not, I'm not here to have a fight with you. I, I want, I want you to feel connected because that's the thing you obviously feel very disconnected if you're spouting abuse at people like and that's really I find that so sad because I felt disconnected myself I felt very isolated before um and if someone had or did because they did reach out and go look come on the sort of the digital equivalent of let's go for a drink let's have a chat um I would have really appreciated that I did really appreciate that when I was younger um and it kind of, like I say, it kind of gives them the opportunity of a get out, basically, which is good. And then another thing that I do, which again is kind of, it's, what is it? I do this a lot in person as well. I <laughs> tend to, in order to diffuse the situation, I also will agree with whatever they've said. So I remember like, you know, I get this, not a lot, but in my head a lot because again I'm concentrating on the negative because I'm hardwired to do that as we all are as humans um when people say oh you're you're a rubbish drummer or something like that I get that on my lives a lot when I'm doing my free playing um and you know something along the lines of you're not even that good um I will come back and say you're right I'm not I've got such a long way to go, but that's kind of the beauty of playing an instrument. Like it never ends. I agree with you. I think I'm totally getting away with this. And I kind of open up that dialogue and often it does activate a response that's a lot kinder and a lot more open than this fight that they're just trying to have. So it's kind of then met with, oh no, but you know, it's, it's great what you're doing, but you know, I'm just saying like, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Like, I'm not, I do not disagree with you one bit. And it's one of the strange byproducts of, uh, this is gonna sound so strange, but it's one of the strange and positive um, upsides of having quite low self-esteem for the majority of my life the amount of negative self-talk that I've given myself over the years has been horrendous. Like possibly the worst things that you could ever imagine someone saying to another person, but I would be saying it to myself. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. I will do another episode on that because it's, it's so important um, to kind of not to, well, it is important to get out of that, but just to kind of not feel alone that you're not the only one talking to yourself in such a terrible way. Um, and I've learned some reframing techniques to kind of deal with that. And I'd love to share that with you guys. Um, but anyway, uh, because I've done that, because I've grown up really, dare I say, hating myself for a long time, there's not a lot that people can say to me that I haven't said to myself and worse. So it doesn't really affect me that badly, which is really, really useful. And like I said, talk about putting a positive spin on an absolutely a uh, horrible situation <laughs> growing up. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of um, how I deal with trolls and haters, the, the main ways that I deal with it. Obviously, every situation is different. There might be slightly different things that I do, but that those are kind of the crux of how I deal with uh, any sort of negative attention, if you like. The only other thing that I will say, and I've thought this for probably the last couple of years, um, partly because of some books that I've read, I think, um, and the more that I've thought about it, the more that I've gone, yeah, that actually kind of makes sense, is that I reframe haters and trolls, and I think 
okay, if I'm getting haters and trolls, that means that I'm reaching a wider audience, which means that actually I'm probably doing something right because not everyone's going to agree with me and they shouldn't. They absolutely shouldn't. And, and always question what anyone is saying to you or telling you or, you know, just because it's my experience, it doesn't mean that it's valid. It does, Like, it's valid for me, but it doesn't mean that you should take it as gospel. It doesn't mean that you should go, ah, oh, that must be the rule. It's, it's not. It's my experience. Test it out. Do some experiments of your own. See what works for you. See what doesn't work for you. But the point is, if those haters and trolls exist, I now say, oh, great. Okay, if I'm getting a negative comment, that means I'm doing something right. Don't get me wrong. If there's like 200 negative comments and like three positive ones, I I would take a hard look at myself and go, I've done something here because that's that's not okay. So as long as they outweigh the, as long as they, sorry, as long as the positives outweigh the negatives, I'm definitely doing something right. Um, and that makes me happy. So I hope uh, some, in some way this has helped you kind of like deal with any negative comments that you get, whether that is in real life, whether that's online, um, you know, there, there's always a way to look at things to gain some sort of positive thing. The other thing with haters, you know, even if that makes them feel better and if they genuinely believe, for instance, you know, they watch me play and they go, you're not even that good a drummer. If that then, and I say this a lot, but if that then makes them go, I can do better and I'm going to, and I'm going to take action on it. That is the best thing I can hear in my life. Like, I, I really don't care how you get there as long as it gives you the confidence to then do it. I'm happy and tell me about it. Like even if you've said something horrible to me and then you go and do something, come back to me, tell me about it. I really want to hear about it. I just want people to be able to feel that they can do what they are inspired to do and have the courage to kind of follow that path and see where it leads because really you don't know where it's going to go if you'd have told me that i'd be sitting here doing this you know five years ago ten years ago 20 years ago my goodness i would have just been like there is no way in the world that's going to happen so um yeah just just i hope this gives you either the confidence to do it or to uh negate the kind of negative comments to continue doing whatever you're trying to do because it's hard to to try stuff it is especially if you're putting it out there publicly you feel very vulnerable and um so if you can deal with those negative things the other thing is expect them you should expect negative negative comments that way you're not surprised when you get them and you can just deal with them if you have a plan in place to kind of circumvent them when they do happen i find that really really helps um so yeah anyway I hope that this has helped in some way. This lovely ramble of randomness, as always. Trolls and haters, how inspiring. But anyway, um, I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please do like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, then uh, you can support this podcast over on patreon.com forward slash Emily Drums. Over there, you'll get exclusive content. You'll get early access to episodes. You can also uh, give me um, some, uh, if you have any subjects or topics you'd like me to cover, you can let me know them over there um, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Uh, I also do live streams over there as well, as I mentioned earlier. So um, yeah, it, it would be lovely to see you over there. So, so that's patreon.com forward slash Emily Drums. But anyway, hope you're having a wonderful day um, and sending you lots and lots and lots of love. No hate, not never, no how, no way. <laughs> but yeah, have a great time and um, I will see you next time for another subject. All right, I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh,